What do you do if you have multiple calendars and multiple businesses? So you're going to end up in a situation where you've got three different accounts. And let's imagine for now that these are distinct and different Google Workspace accounts. So one, two, three, completely different Google Workspace accounts. Now you're going to have an email address for each one of these users. Now Google might have naturally assigned different colors for you, but you're basically going to end up with these little squares in your account. But basically all three calendars are going to be called Peter Moriarty. And the easiest way to manage your calendars, honestly, is to have these calendars all shared to one account. So if you want to, you can have multiple colors color coded on a single calendar, but to me that gets a little bit confusing. But if you've genuinely got a reason to have different calendars, and for me, I want to send some calendar invites from calendar A, and some calendar invites from calendar B, well, then you can actually do that by using multiple calendars shared with each other. So you'll notice here, my primary account, peter at itgenius.com, right? That's my main business account, and I use that for most of my work. But I also have a secondary account, which is investments, I've got a venture studio, I've got other businesses that I'm involved in, I've got other businesses that I'm director of, invest in and do business with, which has nothing to do with IT Genius. And if I were to email people from IT Genius, they'd be like, huh, this is a bit weird because some of them are in completely unrelated industries to IT. So for that reason, I set up a second Google Workspace account. Now, the other cool thing about this secondary Google Workspace account is I use that for all of my family and personal data storage. Now, I've talked about that on the channel before. I've made multiple videos on this. If you wanna set up a secondary Google Workspace account for your personal use, there are some downsides. You miss out on a lot of the home automation and Google Assistant features. You can't use Google Nest. You can't share any purchases you've made with Google Play with other family members. You can't use the Google One for storage because it's obviously a business account, so you can't use any of those consumer features. And there's a number of other things that are just weird and quirky about it. If you wanna try and use it for home automation, it does work with Google Home. You can see I've got a speaker sitting behind me there. But it can be a bit of a pain in the butt because there's extra hoops that you need to jump through to get it to work. But it is workable. And the upside of using a workspace account for your personal data is it's a bit better for recoverability if anything ever goes wrong. If you put all of your family photos, all of your home videos in a Gmail account, yeah, sure, you can get access to cheap storage with a Google One plan, and that's a pretty reasonable service. But the downside is if anything ever goes wrong with that Gmail account, it's very difficult to get support. If someone hacks into it and steals it, not much chance you're gonna get that back. And that can be absolutely devastating if all of your family memories are there. Now, should you back that up? Yes, it's a good idea to back that up. And there's uh, third-party backup tools available of which we can supply to you at IT Genius. If you're interested, click the link down below. But my personal recommendation is I would rather have the plan B option of getting back into my account using my domain name, which you can do with any business account. And then I don't have to lose sleep over the fact that if something happens, I'm not gonna lose access to all of my personal stuff. Now, that's one scenario. Another scenario here might be that you have multiple businesses and you just wanna be able to send emails from multiple different businesses. It might not be your surname.co, it might be business number two.co. And one of your businesses is pet food and the other business is an accounting firm and you don't want to set your accounting clients emails or calendar invitations from petespetfood.com right so in those cases and yes including the case that you actually do end up using a gmail account i do have a gmail account which i use from time to time but that also exists there in the puzzle we want to make this simple and we want to put them all into one place so here's what you do you take your one main account. And this is the account that you'd be logged into most of the time. For me, in this case, it happens to be my IT Genius account. And I call this my master account, right? Because this is the one I'm using most of the time. And I go to my secondary accounts and I share the calendar from the secondary accounts to my master account. Now, very importantly, when I go to share those calendars, and I'll go ahead and demonstrate here, I go to my sharing settings and I share access, you'll see here, to be able to make changes to events. So you've got different levels of access to here, but I'll make sure 
that the additional account has the ability to make changes to events. Now I'm demonstrating from my master account here, but you get the idea. You log into the secondary account and you share it back to the master account. And here's what it looks like when we're done. So inside my Google Calendar on the left hand side, you'll see my primary calendar is in blue and all of these nice dark blue events are my primary calendar. They go a different color when they're in the past, which is why they look a bit different here. I'll go to the future just for uh, just to make it simple. Now, if I want to add an event to my secondary account, now, unfortunately, it's still called Peter Moriarty. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes it a little bit difficult, right? But I know that it is a different color. You'll see here that it's green. So that makes it obvious that it's a different calendar. The all day events here are different. And you can see here, it also has meetings on my calendar, which are a different color. Now, if I were to create an event on that calendar, you'll also notice I put a little emoji in the name to give me just that little bit of difference in the name here. I could even rename it and no one's no one's going to know that that's different, right? I could call that Peter, uh, you know, external if I want, or I could call it Peter's pet food, uh, you know, whatever, whatever I want. No one's going to see what this name is unless I share the calendar with them. Uh, but I like to have it as my name, right? OK, cool. So if I go ahead and create a new event, each time I go to create a new event, I've got the option to choose which calendar do I want to create that event on. So I can choose my main calendar here or I can choose my secondary calendar, the M, right? So that stands for Moriarty.co, which is the venture business. And then from there, I've even got a personal calendar. It's got a little another little icon yet again. It's still Peter Moriarty, but this is effectively my personal calendar. And this again has a different one. So like if I want to go to the gym, I'll usually put that on my personal calendar there. There we go. We have three calendars here that I have access to. Now, these could all be under one account and I could just create multiple calendars if I wanted to. But if I want to send calendar invitations from a secondary domain, well, this is how I do that. So when I create an event, even if I'm logged in as IT Genius, as my master primary account, and I create an event on that secondary calendar, the invitation goes out from the secondary calendar because what it's doing is it's accessing a completely different workspace account, account number two, and it's sending the email from that account. Pretty clever, huh? So that's my three calendar system. If you've got multiple businesses, it is a bit expensive to do it this way because of course you need to pay for a account, account, and account. So that's three accounts that you're paying for for this system to work. We call them buckets of email. Each mailbox where email is being delivered to is a bucket of email. But as long as you don't mind paying for all three of these, you share them from the secondary accounts back to the first account, and then you're good to go. Now. Those with a keen eye may have noticed something interesting inside my calendar in the sharing settings. When I went to share this calendar, have a look. It didn't let me share and allow someone else to make changes and manage sharing. That one's grayed out. Huh, I wonder why that might be grayed out, Pete. Well, there's a policy for that. So if you go to the admin panel, inside your Google admin panel, you've got the option to add a policy for what is the maximum level that your staff can share their calendars at. And you're gonna to have to go and do this for account number two and account number three, because remember, they're the ones that are sharing and they're sharing back to the master. So calendar two, calendar three, we've got here sharing settings. Now you're gonna to have to find the one that says, I think it's here in sharing settings. I'm going to open up all my sharing settings. Okay, here we go. External sharing options for primary calendars. This lets you set the maximum that someone is available to share. Now, I'm on an organizational unit that's not mine. So let me go and find my organizational unit, which is executive. Here we go. So the maximum that can be shared is share all information and outsiders can change calendars, but I'm not allowing any of the users in this organizational unit to share all information and allow managing of calendars. So if you're interested in this sharing, this is where you need to go in the admin panel to make sure the sharing settings are correct. This is a good idea to lock this down. The reason that we lock this down and we don't allow our team to share their calendars and manage sharing outside the company is someone could easily compromise an external account outside of our business that we don't have access to. Maybe someone shares their work calendar to their Gmail, which is totally fine. 
or maybe they share it to their spouse. Totally fine. But what we don't want is their spouse to be able to, I'm not saying they would do it, I'm saying a compromised actor in their account might do it, grab access and start adding people willy-nilly because our customer data is probably going to be in our calendar. Names of our customers, emails of our customers, years and years and years, hundreds or thousands of meetings with customers. We don't want that information getting to anybody outside our business. So we want to be really careful with that. Okay, so that's how you do your shared calendar setup for your business. If you like this one, uh, drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think. If you need more help with what we've covered in this video, IT Genius provides support services to businesses all over the world with problems just like this. Click the link below to get started.